Okay, so today's video is going to finish up with the kingdoms. So last time we had um, spoke, we had talked about the uh, RK bacteria kingdom as well as the U bacteria kingdom. So if you remember, we have three domains. Remember that was our biggest, broadest classification area. So we had three domains, the RK, the eukarya, and the U bacteria domain. And then we had, um, we've got seven kingdoms here. Okay, so with our kingdoms, we've got all the ones down here. So last time we had talked about the RK um, domain and the RK bacteria that were part of that domain, the U bacteria and the uh, domain as well as the U bacteria kingdom that was part of that. And then so today we're going to focus on the eukarya domain and these four kingdoms that are part of that, protista, uh, fungi, plants, and animals. So those are all parts of the eukarya domain. Remember, our big differences between these two domains was prokaryotic versus eukaryotic. Remember, our eukaryotic domain, these are things that are eukaryotic, or they have membrane-bound organelles, okay, where the RK and the U bacteria domain, both of those were prokaryotes, or prokaryotic organisms. And so those did not have any membrane-bound organelles. They were both types of bacteria. Okay, so all these notes that you guys are going to take are going to be on your chart. We're in the second half of your chart there. And so our first kingdom here is going to be Protista. And Protista is going to be kind of our catch-all kingdom. Anything goes here. Okay, this is basically what you're going to have in this kingdom. It's basically anything that does not belong to the animal kingdom, the plant kingdom, and the fungus kingdom. They just get kind of dumped into this kingdom. So because it's in the eukarya domain, first of all, these cells have to be eukaryotic. Okay, which remember again means they have to have membrane-bound organelles, endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, they might have chloroplasts. They'll have a mitochondria. Um, they'll have vas vacuoles and vesicles, and they'll have a nucleus. Okay, they have membrane-bound organelles. So they're eukaryotic. Um, in this kingdom, they can be unicellular or multicellular. So there's no set um, distinction there. We've got unicellular here, as well as a multicellular organism there. Multicellular as a general rule. If they're multicellular, they are not organized much past the tissue level. Remember, tissues are groups of cells that work together. Uh, multicellular protists are not going to have organs or organ systems. Okay? They would just have tissues. And some examples of that would be things like algae. Okay, so in addition to, um, they can be unicellular or multicellular. Um, so with the cell wall part, some do, some don't. Okay, so some of them have a cell wall, some of them do not. You'll notice as we go through this, there's nothing really definitive in this kingdom. Okay, so when we talk about nutrition with them, okay, again, we've got all kinds of nutrition here. So I've got some autotrophs. Uh, the autotrophs I do have would be photosynthetic. That's this one here. That would be an example of a photosynthetic autotroph. And then we have some heterotrophs which as a general rule, those would be ingestion heterotrophs. That's what's happening here. The dark spots here that are inside, okay, that is food that they have ingested. So you've got both kinds of nutrition happening here, photosynthetic autotrophs as well as ingestion heterotrophs. Um, as for reproduction, you can see both kinds. So they have both sexual and asexual reproduction. Again, it would depend upon the particular organism. Okay. And motility, again, some are motile, some are not. Nothing definitive really here. And when we're talking about motility, if they are motile, a lot of them, because a lot of these organisms are, multi, are unicellular, they will have either flagellum or cilia to um, enable you to really uh, determine whether they're going to be mobile or not. So still looking at the pro, um, protist kingdom here, um, one of the kind of distinguishing characteristics that will help these stick out a little bit is that a lot of them live in a water environment. Okay? They fresh water, salt water, in an organism, so they could be in a water environment. Some of them live on organisms, but these, a lot of these organisms live in water. Like I said, fresh water, salt water, they don't care. Inside an organism, they don't care. 
Um, looking at a wide variety of examples that we have here. Uh, for instance, I've got an amoeba down here. Okay, remember amoebas are those, we talked about those with the um, immune system. They were similar to those uh, phagocytes. They, were, they, used their, they would reach out and grab things. And I've got a multicellular example there. There's an, some algae. Here's another unicellular example with the diatom. Okay, another big multicellular example. You can see this kelp, okay, like seaweed. And up here we've got a paramecium. Okay, a lot of times on your test you will see the picture of a protist and it will be... That was terrible. It'll look kind of like a peanut with an eye, like a hairy peanut with an eye. And most of you guys have seen this picture. Okay, that's your kind of stereotypical protist that they'll show you a lot. Um, and a lot of times there they want you to say that it's a protozoa, which is another example of a protist. So again, wide variety here. Nothing really that you can pin down and narrow down here. Lots of different examples, so you'd want to kind of file away some of those examples. If it tells you it lives in water and it's unicellular, you're going to want to think protist and it's eukaryotic. Our next kingdom then is going to be the fungus kingdom. So again, it's in the eukaryotic domain, so it's got to be eukaryotic. Membrane-bound organelles, nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, vacuoles. Okay, most of these are going to be multicellular. You're going to have one exception to that rule, and that's your yeast right there. Okay, that's my unicellular exception okay, is the yeast, but all the rest of them are going to be multicellular. A, um, a lot of the these, they're going to be multicellular, and they're going to be organized into tissues. So again, you're not going to have organs. You're not going to have organ systems. A, and they, that tissue organization will result in these kinds of strands. See these strands of fungus here? A, those strands there are called hyphae. A, those are long, thin groups of fungus cells that are um, basically... Uh, linked together. It's almost like big long chains, filaments of fungus. If you've ever, um, you know, if you've eaten a mushroom or, you know, cleaned a mushroom and you've seen how they'll kind of peel apart in strings almost, that's the hyphae and that's part of that tissue organization. Okay, so fungus does have a cell wall. Okay, it has a cell wall and the cell wall in fungus is going to be made out of chitin. It is not pronounced chitin, it is chitin. Okay, so in addition to having the cell wall made of chitin, these are going to be, their mode of nutrition here, these are going to be absorption heterotrophs. So they don't have a mouth. They're not actually going to eat anything. They're going to secrete those digestive enzymes and absorb the nutrients that way. Uh, many of them are either parasites, so they're feeding on living organisms, or they're what's called a saprophyte, which is very similar to a decomposer. A, basically, they eat dead things, feed on dead organisms, um, organic material, a, decaying uh, plants and you know the wood from the decaying tree. But that's what they will feed on. So they have a very important ecological role as a decomposer. A, they are also non-motile. Okay, so fungus is really not really able to move around. Okay, and as a general rule, they have a terrestrial habitat. Okay, so they're going to live on land. You're not going to see fungus really in water. They will reproduce. Um, some will reproduce sexually. Um, most of them will reproduce asexually by the use of spores. Okay, so you'll have both sexual and asexual reprodu reproduction. The ones that produce spores, that's a form of asexual reproduction. Like I said, they're ecologically important as a decomposer. Remember, they're the saprophytes that are going to feed on that dead, um, decaying organic material. So they act as decomposers, which is very important. Okay. A lot of them have symbiotic relationships with other organisms. Okay. Uh, some have mutualistic relationships. Remember, everybody gets a benefit in those, okay? And some of them have parasitic relationships. And so the host is being harmed while the, um, while the parasite is getting some kind of benefit. Okay, some examples we have here would be things like ascomycetes. Okay, 
Basidio mycetes. That's what we have a picture of here with these mushrooms, our Basidio mycetes, as well as um, zygomycetes. So hopefully you notice a common suffix here. So if you ever see this, you need to be thinking that it's some kind of fungus. So our next kingdom is the plantae or plant kingdom. Okay, again, it's, it has to be eukaryotic because we're in that eukarya domain. Okay, and hopefully you guys remember plant cells have cell wall, chloroplast, mitochondria, endoplasmic reticulum, that big central vacuole. So they're eukaryotic. They have membrane-bound organelles. Um, plants are also multicellular. And their, um, their cells can be arranged uh, all the way up to systems, organs and systems. They have vascular systems and they have um, various organs um, uh, like xylem and phloem. So plants are a little bit more complex than most of us give them credit for. Okay. So they also have a cell wall. Okay, and hopefully you remember your cell wall of plants is going to be made of cellulose. Uh, cellulose is what we call fiber. Okay, cellulose is indigestible by most animals. Most animals have a mutualistic relationship with organisms that live inside of them that can help break down this cellulose. Uh, but cellulose is what we call fiber. Okay, they are photosynthetic autotrophs. Okay, so they use the they convert the light energy into chemical energy. Okay, so we've got photosynthetic autotrophs here, okay, and they will produce both sexually and asexually. Uh, so, so like I said, again, they produce uh, sexually. They reproduce both sexually. Those would be things like the flower parts. Okay, and we have some plants that will reproduce asexually. They'll make spores like your fungus did. I'm having trouble writing again tonight. Okay, plants are also um, non-motile or stationary. Okay, and I'm pretty sure you guys are aware of that. Never seen a plant or a tree walking around. Okay, so they are non-motile. Okay, they are mostly terrestrial. Okay, most of your plants are going to live on land. Okay, so they're going to be terrestrial. Quote-unquote plants that are in the water, most of those are actually protists. They're algae. Okay, um, they are the basis of the food chain. So, you know, without our producers, without our plants... There's no uh, energy available for the herbivores. Herbivores die out, then there's nothing for the carnivores. They're the basis of our food chain. A okay. wide variety of examples, obviously, ranging from ferns to flowering plants like roses and tulips and daffodils, okay. um, pine trees, oak trees. Trees are not their own separate kingdom. Okay. Grass, all of those fall under the plant category. Okay, and so the last kingdom that we're going to do, um, that we have, is the Animalia kingdom, or animals. Okay, so obviously, again, eukaryotic. In the eukarya domain, so they have to have those membrane-bound organelles. So they're eukaryotic cells. Animals are multicellular. And they can be organized all the way up to the systems level. Think about your own body. Okay, humans are an example of animals. There's no human kingdom Okay, humans are in the animal kingdom, and we have different systems that we've already talked about, you know, immune system, nervous system, cardiovascular system. So we're organized into systems. Okay, uh, no cell wall. No cell wall for the cells. Okay, we are ingestion heterotrophs. So that remember, that means we actually eat the food and then digest it inside of us uh, compared to those absorption heterotrophs that digest the food outside of their body and then absorb the nutrients. Okay, um, as a general rule, animals are going to do sexual reproduction. There are a few that can reproduce asexually, though. Um, some that can convert to asexual reproduction, too, if they have to. Okay, but mostly sexual reproduction. Uh, animals and animals are obviously motile. And as a general, general rule, animals are highly motile. They can move around uh, significantly. Okay, so animals uh, will live virtually anywhere. Okay, you can find them on land. You can find them in the water. You can even find them in the air. Okay, it is the most diverse in appearance of all of the kingdoms. So you have a wide variety of organisms that are in this kingdom, uh, ranging from insects, 
like the ladybug that you see here. And you've got frogs and amphibians, uh, aquatic or marine animals. Okay, like you see up top there, that's a very large jellyfish. Okay, um, humans. So a very wide variety in appearance, very diverse in appearance in this animal kingdom. Okay, so that's all of our kingdoms. Y'all's goal, you should have, hopefully your chart should be complete by now. And you should be able to, what we need you to be able to do with that chart is need you to be able to, if, when given an example, you can apply the information in that chart and determine which kingdom it would belong to.